So, um, our next. Our next speaker is uh, Peter Eisentraut from Enterprise DB. Thank you. Now, is the microphone good? Now I hear myself. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm Peter Eisentraut uh, with, with EDB and long-time Postgres developer, and I'm going to talk about uh, some things that have been on my mind. Um, so one of the kind of interesting, cool things about the Postgres project is that everything we've ever done is on the public record, in particular mailing lists, Git repository, things like that. And so you can always sort of play around with that and find sort of your own anniversaries and things like that and look back with things we've done in the past. And so we know, you know, 1996 is the birthday of the Postgres project and uh, we've had 2006 anniversary summit and in, and then we've had sort of anniversary of, the, of that, and then in a couple of years, we'll probably have another big party. And uh, also the university postcards project at Berkeley started in 1986, so that all kind of lines up nicely. And for me, it's actually also interesting to think that you know, Postgres as a whole has been around for almost 40 years or so, because if you think back another 40 years before that, we barely had computers, right? They were just becoming commercially available at, at you know sort of in the 1940s. So you, you could say sort of for the majority of the time that Postgres, uh, for the majority of the time that you could buy a computer, Postgres existed. That's pretty crazy. But we're we're not we're not quite in 2026 yet. Uh, it's 2024. So I, I want to think about something that what happened 30 years ago this year, and that was. This, uh, the, in 1994, the University Postcards Project was canceled, ended, right? This happens all the time. Research project is done, and that's it. So by any rights, that should have been the end of that, and none of this here today would have happened, right? It's just because a couple of people at the time really cared about it and kept it alive, or resurrected it. And they were volunteers and enthusiasts, right? Certainly professionals in, in, in their fields at the time, but there were no Postgres professionals. It's just because they really cared about it and they kept it alive as, at the time the term open source didn't even exist, right? That, that came sort of 1998, I think. So at the time you just, there was not even a word for that. Uh, but these people sort of, they really cared about it and they just sort of got together and, and uh, kept it going. So just for fun, um, so this is actually, I, I, I can barely see that. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, this is actually somebody, you cannot? Somebody should turn the lights down. Anyway, this is, it's not, it's not that important, but the, um, this is actually someone took the old Berkeley Postgres code and imported it into a Git repository on GitHub. And, and so that's kind of actually nice to do sort of archeological research. It says that last commit 30 years ago, so that matches up. Just for fun, actually, this is what happened today, 20 years ago in the Postgres project. Ooh, this is cool. So this is the, uh, yeah, this is, uh, if people are interested in getting this URL, I can give it to you later. I think this is not the point. <laughs> this is what happened tw 20 years ago today, right? Uh, so the Postgres hackers list, and uh, first of all, notice how few emails per day here. This is and sometimes you get this in an hour nowadays if you have a heavy discussion. But just at the very bottom there, it says uh, Andrew Dunstan. Andrew is also here this week. Uh, Windows milestone. That sounds interesting. So this is actually, he reports 20 years ago today with all with some patches applied. He finally got, he says CVS tips. Some of you will remember what that is. He, Windows finally builds, Postgres on Windows finally builds, passes all the tests. 20 years ago today. Um, some will argue it still doesn't quite work right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, well, okay, I hope Andrew heard that, I don't know. Um, some will argue it still doesn't quite work right, but uh, to, that, that is uh, for some others to answer. But, um,
this is the first patch I got committed into Postgres. And uh, Bruce committed sort of my first, he, Bruce was a commit machine back then, if you guys remember. He just committed everybody's patches that sort of had showed some enthusiasm. And he committed sort of my first 20 or so patches, and then after a while he got fed up and let me do it myself, which is sort of how it worked back then. And this was sort of a build system patch that was sort of my thing, and I guess still is, if some of you know. So this is uh, 25 years ago in, in, in a few days, and it occurred to me that I don't know if I'll be doing this for another 25 years, right? <laughs> it's, it's all great fun and all, right? But just the basic arithmetic of time is, it makes you wonder, right? So this is not quite yet my retirement speech, uh, but it is my succession planning speech. So what defines Postgres? PostgreSQL today. If, you, if, it did, if it didn't exist, what would you have to do to do something and arrive at approximately the same result, right? So first you would have to get a university to do all the initial work for you for free. That really helped. And Postgres is a relational database system that's sort of axiomatic. And uh, every so often there's you know, people think, uh, people, some people out there say relations to the database are over and there's a new thing coming and, and we have weathered those storms over the years and, and I think to some degree have learned to ignore them. Um, I think relational databases have existed not only for, you know, decades but even sort of, if you think about it, centuries, millennia even, right? The idea of storing data in a table and you know, sort of searching it and aggregating it and, and combining it, that, that is sort of as old as time. So I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. The other thing is that Postgres is a, a collective, a, a community of people who really care, as I just said, right? And, and so that is, is uh, something that's difficult to replicate, right? You can't just, if you want to sort of replicate Postgres, you can't just hire 20, 40, 100 people who know that program and just put them on the job. That doesn't work. We need people who really, really care about it, right? That, that's, that's how all of this is held together. So I guess we are doing XKCD today here. Many of you will know this uh, XK, XKCD comic. Uh, someone is laughing seeing it for the first time. <laughs> Right, this is sort of the architect, modern dig digital architecture, and, and we say, you know, uh, the big blocks at the top is sort of well-maintained things, and then there's some project by, maintained by someone in, in Nebraska. And that, we know this is true. We see that, we saw it this year, we see it every year that these, this kind of thing happens, right? And we think that Postgres is one of the bigger ones at the top. And you know, as far as I know, we don't have any Postgres committers in Nebraska, so maybe this is actually true. But, what occurred to me is that picture is actually fractal. So if you zoom in on one of the bigger blocks, it looks like the same thing, right? So, and I think this is true of many sort of community-driven open source projects. I think it is true of Postgres, that there's certainly some areas in Postgres that are well-maintained and have a lot of people who knows about things, but then there's always like a little small thing that is maintained by someone you know, in, in Pennsylvania, let's say. And I, I don't think this is necessarily wrong. This is just how these things go. If we, this were a commercial company, we'd just hire a few people and put them on the job and they would do you know, a, a passable job. But this is not how we work. We need people who really care about all these things. And these are all these little bits where someone really cares, right? Some, this could be sort of obvious things. Some people care about executor performance, but there's also people who really care about sort of good release nodes or some people who care about you know, PG Bench or, or checksums or Unicode or even encodings that are not Unicode, God bless you. And you can pick your own niche and we need people who care about all these niches and this is what puts all of this together, right? So last year in Prague, um, Simon Riggs sadly departed. He said there's gonna be more Postgres code written in the next 20 years than was written in the past 20 years, right? And I think that's true. And you can apply this also to other uh, sort of en endeavors, right? There's probably gonna be more Postgres conferences in the next 20 years than in the past 20 years, right? And so on and so on. 
But that code is not going to be written by the people who wrote it in the, in the past 20 years. Right? So, and, and so the corollary of all of that is that we are also going to have to find or recruit more Postgres contributors in the next 20 years than in the past 20 years. And we're going to need more Postgres contributors in all the areas in the, ne in the, past, in the next 20 years than we've ever recruited before, right? And I think that's the big challenge ahead. So here's a chart of active Postgres committers. And when I put this together over the past 20 years, if you can't quite see from 2004, and when I put this together, I was actually quite pleased to see that it's kind of going up because I, my intu intuition was a little bit different. But if you extrapolate this, we're going to be at 40, 50 committers you know, in, in the time frame I'm talking about. And, and again, this is only proxy for all the other activities that we have, you know, infrastructure conferences, outreach, education, and so on and so on. And so it, if we want to have it go up that way, we're going to have to have more people, right? And how do we find them? I don't know. I think more, more likely they're going to find us. And when they do, the most important thing is that we welcome them, right? I think that's really the big task ahead. So those of you who have maybe paid more close attention to development or sort of community activities over the past year or so will we'll have noticed there's, there is quite a bit more activity and energy around that because you know some people have realized that. So there's lots of stuff going on in the area of mentorship programs from senior Postgres hackers to aspiring Postgres hackers, for example. There's hacking workshops going on, not only at conferences, for example, but also in between. There's actually just been one posted today, again, if you're interested in that kind of thing. There's you know, all kinds of things going on in, in, in patch review tutorials or helping people review their patches at uh, various conferences and things like that. Some developers are having office hours, for example, to make them more approachable and things like that. The developer conference this year sort of rebooted and put a lot of energy into these kinds of activities and things like that as well. So I think a lot of people are very excited about that. I'm very excited about that. And it's only been a couple of months in some of these things. In, in some cases, it felt like forever, but it's really just been a couple of months in some of these. So we'll, we'll see where this goes. It's early days, but I think there's a lot of excitement around that in, in uh, at least among some developers that I talk to. So, but I think my point here is I think this is, this kind of thing is, is now part of the job. It has to be part of our job if we want, you know, the next 20 years. So, all right, so this is the sponsor keynote, so I should tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. Um, sustainable open source development, that's the baseline, right? This is selling products and services on top of open source, using the proceeds to back into, put back into development. That's what you know, ADB have been doing for 15 years. A lot of you are also doing that. And, um, but it also means doing these things, right? Not only developing things, but also growing the community, right? And we're very excited and eager to you know, support all these initiatives. And, um, it was actually in 2016, this was long before I ended up at EDB, I was talking to Mark Linster, who was back then, he's also here this week, and uh, he was running engineering at EDB at the time, and I was talking to him, sort of what was his sort of greatest, what he felt as, for the, as the greatest challenge for the community from his perspective, and it was basically exactly this, growing the developer community, right? He, he told me this back then, and I just years later made this connection that this has basically been the, the plan all along. Certainly all of this is essential to EDB's business, and we're you know, very eager to support these initiatives. We also have some software. Postgres, EDB Postgres Advanced Server is Oracle compatible with Postgres, so if you want to migrate from Oracle, that's a good landing spot. Uh, we have Postgres distributed. Some of you fondly remember it as BDR. That's a multi-master replication for very high availability. We're sponsoring cloud-native Postgres. Uh, there was just uh, presentations about that this, uh, this week here. So I would say the most popular uh, uh, post, uh, 
Kubernetes operator for Postgres that is an open source project that EDBS launched and is continues to sponsor. And for the purists, there's also just basic technical support for community Postgres. And all of these work together. So you can buy some of these so we can sponsor more conferences. Um, but um, how are we on time? One minute, great. Yeah, so my, I'd be very eager to receive feedback. There's lots of people here from you know, developers, users, experts, some novices probably from all, all parts of the world. I would really uh, love to get some feedback on, on sort of my uh, thoughts here, and I'll be around tomorrow, obviously, or later, or offline. I think this is a conversation we should be having, and we will be having over you know the com uh, the coming months and years. So, thank you. <laughs> Can we, um, oh, yeah, uh, I might need the lights dimmed or off. I might need the lights off as well. I'm not sure. Okay.